When NASA sent astronauts to the moon in the 1960s with the Apollo missions, the goal was to beat the Soviets. America won the space race, and shortly after, Apollo was canceled. It has now been 50 years since a person last stepped foot on the moon. And now, we are about to go back. This is called the Artemis program. And unlike its older brother, Artemis is not about short trips to the moon. No, Artemis is about long-term presence on the moon for decades to come. This is the simplest explanation I can give you of the Artemis program. And it is a lot more complicated than Apollo, but as you'll see, for good reason. So let's talk about it. And I will explain piece by piece how the Artemis program works. The best place to start is actually right here in the center. This is called the Lunar Gateway Station, and as you'll see, it's key to this entire program. In many ways, Gateway is the sequel to the International Space Station. It's a collaboration of 26 nations, including the United States, but it orbits a thousand times further away from Earth than the ISS. The Gateway is not just a science laboratory. It's actually base camp for astronauts who are about to explore the moon. The station is actually situated in a unique orbit called a near rectilinear halo orbit that will give the station access to every single spot on the moon. This orbit is incredibly stable and will use almost no fuel to be able to maintain. But interestingly, because Artemis will only take missions for a month or two at a time, at least for a while, this station will actually be uncrewed for most of the year. During that time, the Gateway Station has actually been designed to allow scientists to do work remotely doing experiments, studying the moon, studying Earth, and studying the sun 24-7. Next, there is the Artemis Lunar Lander, or the HLS. Artemis will actually have two lunar landers at first, one from SpaceX and one from Blue Origin. These landers will all be launched uncrewed from the Earth. They will actually get refueled in Earth orbit until they have enough fuel to make the 400,000 kilometer journey to the moon. Then the lunar lander will autonomously dock with the Lunar Gateway Station to await the crew. This brings us to the primary rocket that NASA will use to get astronauts to and from the moon, the SLS. Specifically, the SLS Block 1B. This is a larger version of the Artemis 1 launch we saw in November of 2022. The top part here of the SLS is called the Orion Command Module. Orion is a huge advancement over Apollo from 50 years ago. It's about double the size, it can support a larger crew, and can literally bring tons of equipment to the moon. And on this mission, Artemis 4, it's also bringing a module for the Lunar Gateway Station. Once Orion docks with the Gateway Station, the astronauts will begin living on the station full time. Whereas Apollo astronauts were only on their mission for about eight days, Artemis 4 is designed to last about 28 days, and later missions will last even longer. After a few weeks of doing experiments on the Gateway Station, two of the astronauts will go on board the lunar lander and will descend to the moon's surface. These lunar landers can bring as much as 100 metric tons of cargo to the moon's surface. In future missions, that will include habitats for the moon, lunar rovers, and of course, lots of science experiments. On Artemis 4, the astronauts will spend a full week exploring the moon's surface. Once the surface mission is complete, the astronauts will get on board the lunar lander and will take the entire thing back up to Gateway Station. Remember, this is different than Apollo because Apollo left the descent module permanently on the moon. Eventually, all four astronauts on board the Gateway will move any rock samples from the lander to Orion, undock from the station, and head back to the Earth. In a few days, Orion will splash down in the Pacific Ocean. So now that the Artemis 4 mission is over, there is tons of stuff that we can reuse that's still at the moon for future missions. This is completely different from the Apollo program when everything was single use only. We still have the Lunar Gateway Station, which is not only available for future missions, but it's also, remember, doing science remotely 24 seven. And we still have the Lunar Lander. Both of the new Lunar Landers are designed to be refueled and used again and again. So if we compare Artemis 4 to Apollo 11, you'll see Artemis is a lot more complicated. There's a lot more going on, but that's because Artemis is doing a whole lot more than Apollo and costing a lot less. And Artemis is designed with the future in mind. Whether you wanna build a base on the moon, you wanna study it from orbit, you wanna study the effects of deep space on humans, 
or you want to build a ship to go to Mars, Artemis is designed to be that next step. Okay, let's talk timelines. When is all of this happening? Well, honestly, it's probably a lot sooner than you think. Here's an update as of the end of July, 2024. The SLS started with Artemis 1, which launched in November of 2022. It was a nearly flawless flight, performing way better than anyone expected. There were just a couple of things that we learned that need to be changed before future missions, but overall, a huge success. Artemis 2 will be crewed by these four astronauts. Right now, it is scheduled to launch no earlier than September of 2025, next year. Now, Artemis 2 will not land on the moon. It's meant to be a flight demonstration with a crew and will instead orbit the moon for several days before returning back to Earth. The Lunar Gateway Station is under construction right now in the United States, Canada, Japan, and Europe. The first two segments are scheduled to be launched on a Falcon Heavy rocket no sooner than October of 2025, next year. SpaceX Starship is scheduled to have its fifth test flight any day now here in 2024. The Starship, honestly, is a revolution in rocket design. The entire super heavy lift rocket is designed to be reusable. And of course, Starship will serve as the very first lunar lander, the Starship HLS. But Starship is an incredibly ambitious design, and I would expect a few more delays before it's ready to carry anyone to and from the moon. Artemis 3, which is scheduled to be the first landing of the moon under the Artemis program, is set to launch no earlier than September of 2026. At this point, that massive Starship lander would likely be the primary reason for any delay. The HLS has been identified as a top risk for delays by NASA, and they've given it about a 60% chance of making that 2026 launch window. Artemis 4, that mission we just walked through, is set to launch no earlier than four years from now, September of 2028. So Artemis 1 through 6 are really about getting everything up and running and making sure that the hardware works as we expect it to. After that, Artemis will be fully operational, and at this point, missions are set to take place once every single year. As missions become more frequent, they're also set to become a lot longer. By the time we get to Artemis 11 in 2036, that mission is set to be as long as one entire year. So will there be delays? Yes, probably. There have already been quite a few delays, but all of this is going to cost about half as much as it costs to send people to the moon under the Apollo program. Artemis has a lot of new technology and a lot of firsts. For example, no one has ever done a fuel transfer in space like we'll have to do with Artemis. No one has ever landed 100 metric tons of cargo on the surface of the moon. No one has ever built a space station remotely 400,000 kilometers away. No one has ever built a super heavy lift rocket that is 100% reusable. If you've seen the crewed Boeing Starliner test over the last several months, you'll know that testing new hardware is challenging. You don't know what you don't know until you actually fly the stuff. But unlike with Apollo, we have time on our side. Artemis is a marathon, not a sprint. So that's a brief overview of the Artemis program. On the surface, it is a little complicated, but that's because it's incredibly ambitious. If all goes to plan, we are going to have a sustained human presence on the moon within this decade. I'm doing a whole series on the Artemis program. We're going to break down each component of what we walked through today and see how it all works together. So be sure to stay tuned, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.